Welcome to the Thursday edition of the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast, a podcast for English teachers in search of creative teaching strategies. Whether you're new around here or a longtime listener, I'm so glad you're joining me for today's edition of Highly Recommended. This week, I'm sharing one of my favorite graphic novels from a year of reading a lot of graphic novels. It's called The Dark Matter of Mona Starr by Laura Lee Gulledge. Have you been wondering how to integrate a graphic novel into your curriculum? Maybe you want to try one as a whole class text, or maybe launch some book clubs? Oh good. I'm now opening the doors to my free summer workshop, Camp Creative. Over the course of one week, I'll give you everything you need to banish your anxiety over getting started or going deeper with graphic novels. Get ready to see your students thrive with this accessible genre. Each day, you'll build your creative confidence and your graphic novel unit. Just as in Camp Creative's past, each day's training, packed with resources and tips, will arrive in your inbox, ready for you to explore when you have time. Get ready to scratch, figure out that whole graphic novel thing off your long-term to-do list, because you're about to get everything you need for success and a fun community to dive in by your side. You'll find the link to sign up in the show notes today. I can't wait to work with you inside this free summer session. So I haven't found too many books for teens that really address mental health. I know that there are some out there. I haven't gone way out of my way to look, but I do read a lot of books um, thinking about students' needs, and they just don't come up that often. The Poet X is one that I also love, but this one, The Dark Matter of Mona Star, is even more direct than that one in approaching the issue. And it it also shows a very positive way to work through mental health challenges without being super moralistic or prescriptive as a book. So that's that's kind of one of the main reasons that I love it, um, but it's not the only reason. So let me tell you a little bit about the book. The main character, Mona, is dealing with depression. She calls it her matter, which I love. She says, everyone is always asking her, what's the matter? But she doesn't really know. She's got this matter. She's got this something that that affects her feelings and sort of causes her her behavior to change in ways that she doesn't want sometimes. Her therapist suggests she tries looking inward and just kind of being a student of her own patterns, her own emotions. And that's that's kind of what kicks off the book. She tells the story of her year, her year as a volunteer, as a student, as a friend, as an artist. But as she's telling the story, it's all wrapped in this kind of thoughtful self-analysis that she's set up at the beginning as the frame. Like she's going to try to figure out what's going on with herself so that she can be happier so that she can um, change her patterns, change the things that that are really difficult for her and try to move the needle in the direction that she wants for her life. The most powerful thing about this graphic novel for me was the illustration of Mona's emotions. These illustrations are just amazing. I have read so many graphic novels this year and they really range in how artistic they feel, right? I mean, sometimes the art brings the story to life and it it just sort of allows you to visualize what's happening. But in this book, the art really takes on a life of its own. There are multiple moments as I was reading that I just stopped to examine the illustrations and just kind of wonder at them and and just look at them as art. I think trying to illustrate a feeling has got to be a huge challenge, but Laura Lee Gulledge breaks out of the panel structures of the graphic novel all the time throughout the book and lets Mona's emotions just swirl around the page and sort of take on their own shape. They burst out from the panels. They burst out of the black and white that all the rest of the of the story is in. So it's like a black and white narrative arc for the most part in these panels. But then when there are big feelings, big emotions, they they break past the panels. They add splashes of yellow, like little sparkles, little stars, little swirlies in yellow um, bursts of light and it's just it's just beautiful (laughs) and so um, there's really a lot to talk about with students in terms of how the art brings the story um, kind of beyond the words and I think that's 
a really wonderful thing with a graphic novel. I think it's really interesting to, to talk with kids about, um, you know, how is this different from a book? How, how, what techniques is the artist using, um, to, to illuminate the meaning here beyond the captions, beyond the dialogue? Um, how, how does the art have a, a role and a voice of its own. Um, and so you can talk about sort of the role of color. You can talk about these techniques. There are splashes, there are bleeds. These are, these are graphic novelist tools where the art goes beyond the panel or the art takes over an entire page, um, for reasons of, of its own, right. Where the, where the author wants to, wants to really share something specific by changing the way the art is presented. And, um, I, I think it's a really exciting thing to talk about with students. So for its stunning originality, it's super positive take on an underrepresented issue. The Dark Matter of Mona Star was really one of my favorite reads this year, and that's why today I am highly recommending it to you. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about The Dark Matter of Mona Star. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative. Mm-hmm.